In the last lecture, we saw the definition of LTI systems and now in this presentation, we will understand what is transfer function. The transfer function is an important parameter and we will first see the definition of transfer function. The transfer function is defined as the ratio of Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input when all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero. The last point when all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero is very very important. Without this point you cannot define the transfer function. I will explain the significance of this point after some time but first we will write down our transfer function. The transfer function is represented by HS. It is a complex function. The transfer function is a complex function and the variable s is also complex. The variable s is also complex and the transfer function is easily obtained after taking the Laplace transform of impulse response. HT is the impulse response and after taking the Laplace transform of impulse response you will have the transfer function of the LTI system and when you take the inverse Laplace transform of the transfer function you will have the impulse response. Now from the definition we can clearly see the transfer function is equal to the Laplace transform of output and let's say the output of the system is yt. This is our LTI system. The input is xt and the output is yt and after taking the Laplace transform of the input we have xs and after taking the Laplace transform of output we have ys and don't forget to take the Laplace transform of the system relationship you will have something. Now the ratio of Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input is equal to the transfer function. So y s over x s is the transfer function but don't forget to add this line along with the definition. All the initial conditions are assumed to be zero. So with zero initial conditions. Now we will try to understand the significance of this particular point why zero initial condition is required to define the transfer function. We already know the transfer function, the transfer function and the impulse response is only used for LTI systems. So our system here is an LTI system. This means our system is linear plus it is time invariant. And if you remember the properties of linear systems, you will find there is one property according to which when the input of a linear system is equal to zero, the output of the linear system will also become zero. Now if you don't assume the initial conditions to be zero, this property is violated. And when this property is violated, the system will become non-linear. And when system becomes non-linear, the system becomes non-LTI and for non-LTI systems, we cannot define the transfer function. I will explain how the property is violated if we don't consider zero initial conditions. The output here is the total output, the total output of the system and it is equal to zero input response plus zero state response. I will write down the names here. ZIR stands for zero input response and ZSR stands for zero state response. The first response zero input response is when the input is equal to zero and the response is due to the initial conditions. Initial conditions due to initial conditions and zero state response is the response when the input is applied. Response means the output and because of these two responses we have our total output. Now if you don't consider the initial conditions to be zero then you will have zir. Zir will not be equal to zero because the initial conditions 
are not equal to 0, the input is equal to 0 in this case. Now consider the input equal to 0, the input equal to 0, ZSR will become 0. So no ZSR, but the total output will not become 0 even when the input is equal to 0. Now listen to this once more, the total output is equal to ZIR plus ZSR. ZIR is the zero input response. It is the output of the system due to initial conditions. We are not considering the initial conditions to be zero. So ZIR will not be equal to zero, will not be equal to zero. There will be some ZIR because the initial conditions are not equal to zero. And for ZIR, the input is always equal to zero. The second output is ZSR, it is the zero state response and it is calculated when input is applied and as we are considering input to be zero, ZSR will be equal to zero. ZSR will be equal to zero as the input is equal to zero. So the total output is not equal to zero. The input is zero but the total output is not equal to zero because ZIR is not equal to zero. So we are applying zero input to our system but the total output is not equal to zero because the total output is equal to ZIR plus ZSR. ZSR is equal to zero but ZIR is not equal to zero because the initial conditions, the initial conditions are not equal to zero and as the input is zero and output is not equal to zero, the system is non linear and as system is non-linear we cannot define the transfer function therefore it is important to consider all the initial conditions to be zero when initial conditions are zero are equal to zero the zero impulse response will become equal to zero and when input is zero zsr is already zero so zero plus zero will be zero and our output will become zero so for zero input we have the zero output and the property of linear system is satisfied so this is the complete explanation required for the transfer function. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. In the coming presentation, we will solve the questions based on transfer function. I will explain how to calculate the transfer function when the system relationship is given. So this is all. See you in the next one.